Hi guys, this is James Ramsey with Ramsey Innovations back again with another tutorial video. Um, this time around, I'm going to show you guys how to modify the Devo F4 um, transmitter radio by Walkera for upgrading the video receiving antenna to a patch antenna and also upgrading the control transmitting 2.4 gigahertz antenna to an Apache antenna as well and to do that we're gonna have to open up the Devo F4 and install these two IPX to RPM SMA cables um, so what you're gonna need for this is a Phillips head screwdriver a flathead screwdriver an Allen key and a hobby knife or a razor blade will do um, the Allen key is a, let me check on my caliper here what size it is. It's a two millimeter, two millimeter Allen key. Um, so, first thing you want to do, make sure there's no batteries in it. Take out your batteries. And uh, one thing I want to mention about this radio, let me get this up here so you guys can see. Hopefully. Shadow this a little bit. See where it says off to the right 0.2 A? Okay, well, the A signifies that it's a 100 milliwatt transmitter versus the 25 milliwatt B version. So if you've got an A there, you've got the higher power version. Um, inside here is also a 20 decibel power amplifier for the control, um, which will in my tests has gotten me a 2,000 feet range at an altitude of about 25 feet so it's pretty good for a radio like this <clears throat> but uh, with the addition of the patch antenna we should be extending that by quite a bit so what I've gone ahead and done is taken out the Allen keys the four right here to save you guys the time of having to watch that and there's one Phillips head screw right here then the first thing you're going to want to do is pull this cap off and it takes a fair bit of force to take it off especially the first time um, so just kind of you know grasp the whole thing and give it a good tug and it'll come off of there so there you can see the 2.4 gigahertz control antenna probably not the best made antenna but it got me 2,000 feet so it's pretty good <clears throat> next thing you want to do is to work on the radio with it laying down like this you don't want to put a bunch of pressure on the sticks and stuff and just lay it down so I take a, a rolled up towel like this and span it across the front like that keep the pressure off the sticks and that way it can just kind of rest gently like that alright so after you pull out all the allen keys and the screw at the top you need to pry these rubber grips on the side off just use a fingernail or a flathead screwdriver will do it. The first time you take these off, it's a bear. So keep that in mind. Once you start popping those out of there, you can see it just kind of peels off. This side and set that aside. You're also going to want to have a, a little cup or something to, to toss your screws in. That way you don't lose anything. Just comes in handy. All right. So one other thing, real quick, that I want to mention is um, I run a, a 2S LiPo in here sometimes when I'm not using the uh, battery holder that I came with for NIMAS. Um, so to do that, uh, my battery pack's a little bit bigger than what can fit in this tray. There's four Phillips head screws that you'll see inside here that that um, holds this little tray in right here. And you can actually pull the retainer out of there and then it buys you quite a bit more space for, um, for a little bit bigger battery. So, um, so you might wanna do that too. All right, so now, Pull this apart carefully. 
Sometimes it's a little tough at the top. Oh. One thing I forgot to mention, once you pull that cap off there, you are going to have a fifth Allen key. And I completely forgot about that um, on the last one that I did. So let's go ahead and take that off. This is a brand new radio. I just got this the other day in the mail. And once it's modified and range tested, I will post another video of the range test on here. And then I'll be putting it up for sale along with um, one of my custom carbon nano builds once I get that all built up. Okay, there we have it. Toss that in the cup. Okay, now this should just pull right off of here. And you can see the inside here. Okay, so you've got the power coming from the battery pack in here going over to here, which is um, your 12 volt plug here for an external power source like a DC adapter or um, possibly um, uh, vehicle power port plug. It takes 12 volts, uh, 1000 milliamps, I believe. So what you wanna do is just separate this back from the front so you don't have this in the way while you're working on it. So just unplug this right here, grab it as close as you can to the plug, kind of give it a little wiggle, pulls right out. And then the same thing with this one over here, this is going to your trainer port, it's a PPM. And just kind of give it a little wiggle, pulls right out of there. Alright, so now we can set this back aside in a safe place. <coughs> And now you get to see the goods here. You get something to... Okay, so this here is your video receiving module. And this is the antenna, the stock antenna that is connected to it via an IPX connector. So first thing I'm gonna do is take my small flathead screwdriver. And this is actually one that I've modified. Um, see if you guys can see that. I I bent it a little bit and uh, put a slot in it and I use it as a prop removal tool. Let me put something dark behind there so you can really see it well. And uh, it works great. I mean, you can just slide it right in. I'll give you an example here. Right in underneath that prop there and just pry it up and it'll just pop your props right off without having to tug on them or anything like that. So I always use that. But anyway, it comes in handy for lots of different things. So what we want to do is go after this plug first. And you want to be very gentle when you're <clears throat> prying up on this. Because we've uh, had some reports that the, um, the base plug on the module itself can lift off. It looks like the soldering's pretty decent on this one, but we'll see how it goes here. So what you want to do is just try and work, work it little by little here. If you can, try and get this lifted off. <clears throat> may have to come from both sides. But again, just take your time. There's no rush here. And there it goes, pulled right off of there. So then we'll just take this and tuck it back up in the antenna out of the way here. And we'll no longer be using that. If I can get my shaky hands in there. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to take a close look at the IPX connector there. 
I'll just make sure everything looks good. It hasn't come loose or anything like that. And it, it does look good to me. <clears throat> Another thing about this radio and most TXs in general, they have like a, a beeper, you know, and it makes a tone when you turn the thing on and turn it off. I can't stand that. This thing has a vibrator in it anyway to warn you of like uh, low battery and stuff like that. So usually first thing I do is disconnect the little plug go into this beeper and it, it's right here you can see you can just unplug that and wrap it up and stick it down in there out of the way tape it down if you want um, for this one since I'm going to be selling this I'm going to leave it connected if somebody requests me to remove it before they buy it sure I'll do that for them <clears throat> all right so moving right along here got our IPX to RP SMA cable you can see that's an RP SMA it's got the center hole inside there and then where it's going to go is basically plug in here and then stick out the shoulder where there's a rubber plug right up here <clears throat> so let's go ahead before we plug it in and remove this rubber plug should pull out fairly easily there we go set that aside and then you want to test fit remove your retaining screws and lock washer oh by the way I got a pair of these IPX to RPSMA cables I got two of them on eBay for like two dollars and fifty cents shipped and uh, look for the ones with this type of a cable on it because it's a it's definitely a better quality cable than uh, some of the other ones that are out there that use this really thin here I'll show you an example is really thin you can see the comparison here and so the shielding is better on this type here okay so moving along let's go ahead and test fit this in here because there is a little tab that we're gonna have to trim around a little bit to get it in there and then um, drill this out a little bit also or you can alternatively just use a hobby knife and kind of work it around in a circle to expand that hole some um, uh, what we're gonna do on this one is I'll probably cut away on this video here and go and drill that hole out a little bit and I'll give you guys the uh, uh, bit size that I use to drill that out um, when you do it just be careful secure everything down as best you can work slowly and um, and uh, you'll just be able to take out it, it does it doesn't need much taken out of there it's just a little bit and um, and then that'll slide right in there nicely so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right here and do that and then we'll come back and uh, go ahead and mount that cable up 